Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be another trying to fix video. Another video where I try to fix something with very limited skills. So what we should have in here is another balance board, a self-balancing scooter, also known as a Segway or a hoverboard, whatever they're called. Now, I've already done one of these on my channel a few weeks ago and it was a complete success. It was practically new in its box but it was not working and all it turned out to be when I opened it up was a faulty connector. Not a faulty connector, a connector that had just come apart. So in transit the battery had knocked this connector and the connector had come undone. So I was really happy with that. So I thought I would try my arm and uh, get another one just to see. Now I'm sure I'm not going to be as lucky again. But still, I didn't really get to take the other one apart very much because it was such an easy fix. So if this isn't an easy fix, then at least I will get to know a little bit more about them. And if it is an easy fix, well, that's just a bonus. So uh, let's have a look to see what it is. I haven't opened this up before, but I'm assuming by the, the size of it that it is going to be a self-balancing scooter and then I'll show you what I paid for it. Now, with all these videos, I'm not an expert at it, so what you see will probably not be the correct way of doing things, but it's just interesting to see the way that different people go about things. So because I'm not an expert, it might be very similar to how you would try to fix something yourself. Right, okay, there's a lot of corrosion on that wheel. Or is it, maybe it's just wear. Not sure. Right, okay, let's uh, see if I can get it out this way. Very strong smell to it. Let's try to open up the box a little bit more. It's ready to come out now. Yes, it is. Here it comes. Right, it's a really strong smell. I'm not sure that's a new smell, or just a, like a chemical smell. Right, and it's uh, got loads of white dust on it. Oh God, this is horrible. Do you know what I think's happened? I think it looks like the sticky, the sticky things come off here. And all the stick has just gone on to, uh, you know, this white powder here. So, I think before I go much further, I'm going to have to give this a little clean up. Also, it looks like it's quite corroded. If you have a look at the wheel here, that looks like corrosion to me. I think this has been left out in the, left out in the rain. In fact, that's not going to turn at all. That's rock solid. Right, before I get any further, let me give it a clean and then we can see what's going on. That wheel's turning here, but this wheel isn't turning at all. So that's going to be quite interesting to see what's wrong. It might be completely seized up. Right, okay. I definitely think this is going to be an interesting one. Right, let me show you what I paid for it. Now, I got it from eBay. And for it, I only pay £39, which, if I can get it working, is going to be an absolute bargain. So it just says there, Segway Hoverboard Balance Board White, £39. And uh, it says here, Hoverboard Segway White for spares or repair. No charger, so we cannot say if faulty or not. Thing is, though, anybody can see that that wheel's jammed, so it's not going to take a genius to work out. That one wheel turns and one wheel doesn't. Mail order return may have slight marks, parts alone worth over £100 clearance, wheels motor, blah blah blah, £100 in parts alone. So, uh, yeah, okay, so you can see £39 is not a lot of money, even if I was just to keep it for spares, it should be worth it. So before I go any further, I'm just going to get a hoover and I'm going to clean all this up because I can already feel my dust, the dust and everything all over my hands. So I'm going to give it a good clean, otherwise it's going to be really messy. And then we'll turn it on and we'll see what happens. Okay. 
Right, okay, so first impressions are that this looks nearly brand new. If you look at the wheels, you can still see that there's like little uh, knobbly bits on the kind of rubber. So if you look closely there, can you see those bits there? So I don't think this has had a lot of use. I think what's happened here is that this has been left, that's just come off, but that needs to be glued back on anyway. I think this has been left out in the rain or Maybe it was faulty and then it was sent back to the company it came from, so the customer sent it back, and then it's been stored in the rain. So uh, right now it has completely seized up. This wheel is not turning at all. And not just that, also, normally when you stand on these, you can move them left and right, but this is seized up in the middle. So I think when we take this apart, we're gonna find that it's completely water damaged. So although the shell and stuff looks in extremely good condition, because as soon as you start riding these and they flip over and they roll, you'll get scratches everywhere. Well, if you look at the rubber on them, they don't look like they've been used at all. So I think that uh, these have been water damaged either in the factory or I don't know where else it could be, maybe maybe when they came over or something, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, if you look closely in the middle here, already I can see a huge amount of rust. So there, look at that, it's completely rusted up. Can you see in there? So I've got a feeling when I open this up, it's going to be disgusting on the inside. Hopefully it has just been left out in the rain and hopefully it hasn't actually been submerged in water. But if you look at the state of those wheels there, you can see that that's definitely corrosion. And also this side is corrosion as well. And if anything, it kind of looks like salt water corrosion, doesn't it? But let's take it apart and see. Uh, should I even try turning it on? No, there's nothing there. Yeah, I've got a feeling that this is going to be... First impressions, I don't think this is going to be fixable. I think that it's going to be uh, completely water damaged. Right, okay, let's uh, take it apart and see what we find on the inside. Yeah, all the screws as well are completely rusty. So if you have a look here. Can you see there? every single one of them but you never know if it is just I'm thinking would rain have got to the underneath of this seems like it's been stored more in a really damp environment okay we won't know until we start taking it apart thing is, as far as the hoverboard is concerned, it does look like a slightly better one because it's got these on the top and at least they've kind of put warning stickers on the bottom. Normally the, the uh, other ones, the original one I bought myself and the other one was a fix-it one. There was none of these uh, safety stickers on it. Hopefully I will be able to get all the screws undone because you know sometimes when they rust up. But hopefully because they're just going into plastic I should be okay. Picked the wrong room to do this in really. Really I should be doing this in the kitchen because with all this rust I don't want to get it all over the carpet. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what's on the inside. I I've got a feeling it's all going to be completely, uh, completely ruined. Because when I took apart the other one, it was just all absolutely perfect on the inside, you know, it looked just completely brand new. Right, here we go. Place your bets. What do you reckon? Ruined or not? Or just surface corrosion? My thinking is looking at the wheels that they're going to be completely going to be completely ruined on the inside.
Da -da. Right, yeah, everything is completely rusty. Everything. So this has been, I would say, this has been submerged. And there's no battery in it. Unless the battery is the other side, the battery should be here. Yeah, I think I've been well and truly had on this one. Okay, let's take it apart and see. Oh, God. Yeah. That looks to be a different colour in there as well. It looks to be like a yellow. Maybe it's supposed to be, but uh, I'm not sure. You can see all that. The mess of the screws. I think this has been dropped. I think this has gone into a river somewhere. This is completely seized. I don't think I'm going to be able to free that at all. Right, let's take off the other side and see what the lights are on the other side. I'm almost certain the battery should be housed here and plugged into this connector here. Because that looks like a battery connector, doesn't it? And this looks like a cage for a battery. Now, what do you reckon? Do you reckon the uh, eBay seller knew about this? Yeah, of course they knew about this. It didn't take a genius to look at it from the outside and see that it was water damage. So, uh, yeah. I can almost say with near enough 100% certainty that. Uh, this won't be working again. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to get this screw out. This one's completely rusted. Head's gone on that one. So, on the plus note, you might be able to reuse the shell. Because, uh, you know, shells get bashed up really easy. So actually paying £40 for the shell might not be too bad if I can get it out without breaking it. I looked at the seller though, and they, uh, they're not a business seller, but what worried me a little bit is it was a dis very distinctive photo with the 39 written in big, uh, in big letters. And basically, when I looked at other listings that had the 39, they were, I won't say where it's from, but they're all from the same part of the country. Different postcode, different sellers, but they're all from the same part. And the postcode was, was from the, the beginning of the postcode was from the same area. So the postcode in the UK would be the same as like a zip code in the US. So uh, that got me slightly worried. For me, it's no big deal because, you know, it's £39. If anything, it makes the video more interesting. But uh, it would be disappointing now if somebody, you know, didn't earn a lot of money and uh, they saved up to buy their kid this for birthday or Christmas or something, thinking that maybe they might be able to get it working. And then you'd be awful disappointed to find out it's in such a state because, you know, the other one I got was, I think, 50 I can't remember what I paid, £50, £55. And you've seen it just needed a connector put in, but even if it didn't just need the connector, even if there was some faulty part of it, it was immaculate. But with this, it's, well, basically it's scrap. I can't see any part of this being reused apart from the actual uh, shell. And even then, you're going to have to stick things like that back onto it. And I might not even be able to get the shell off unless I can get this screw off. Which is completely welded in here. I'm going to try to tighten it a bit just to see if I can break the seal. Can't tell if it's coming or whether it's just strip, uh, whether the head's just stripping. I think the head's just starting to strip. Yeah, the head's just going on it. Let me try some other, other screws in there, other screwdrivers. I don't want to ruin all my screwdrivers for the sake of getting that screw out. What I'm 
I'm thinking of is though, why has it got the battery if the battery goes in this part, which I'm pretty sure it does because look, red and black terminals and a battery connector. How's the battery been taken out? It must have been taken out before the water damage. So maybe, I think what this might be is, I'm wondering whether there was a fault with it and then it's just been left out in the rain or just left out, it may be left out in the rain for a year or possibly more, I don't know how old these ones are. And what's that thing there? I don't know, maybe that's some kind of Bluetooth module or something on it. Right. So the default here might not be the water damage, it might have been something that you know went faulty before the water damage, this might be just an added hassle to it. See the head now has completely gone, it looks more like a, an Allen key or a hex key. <laughs> right, okay. I'll try a bit longer and if not I'm going to have to try and get a drill on it because I have to get into this to see what it's like. Let's get all the others out. So it's a machine screw one that I need to get out. It's just the end ones here and here that are just the uh, self tappers. Okay, so it's the machine screw that I need to uh, drill out or I need to get the head off it and then once I get the head off it I might be able to just use pliers to get the rest out. Because if anything I do want to keep the case because my son's one now is starting to get quite scratched up so to have another case at least I can get some kind of, uh, some kind of salvage from this. Right, let's get the drill out and see what happens. Okay, I've got my good old uh, Matabo drill from years ago, still going strong. So I've just got a normal uh, metal bit on it and uh, I am going to be taking it off hammer. And let's see, hopefully because it's rusty it might not be too bad. I'm going to try and do it without making a load of damage to the shell. in there. There we go, got it. Alright, look. There we go. Okay. I think I've got it. Let's see if it'll come off now. It's still well, well and truly stuck. Sure, it's gone from all the way round. There we go. There we go. Okay. Right. It's weird. It's like a battery connection this side as well. 
And that's not connected, that should be connected, I presume that goes in that part there, maybe. No, maybe not. Uh, right, okay, let's disconnect it anyway. So if that goes on the right hand side, where is this one supposed to go? I think there's loads of things missing from uh, here because we've got another battery terminal here as well. I don't know where this is supposed to go though, this one. This is for the charging, this is to charge it up. Well, that is weird, I can't see where that is supposed to connect to. And that's to charge up. That is to charge up the battery. So uh, right, I'm just going to take the camera off just so I can refer to this if I need to put them back, which I'm not going to need to. But uh, so we've got the the power switch there. That one there. That's to turn it on. That goes to that connector there. And then the lights goes to the connector on the right hand side. So these lights here to the ones on the right. Okay, so I was saying about reusing the shell, but uh, it would be unlikely that the shell would work because of the lights here. But still, you never know. Right, let's take that off. You never know, the lights might work because it does look to be pretty sealed in here, but you know, there's even rust on the, uh, these bits here as well. You can see corrosion here. This is more than just rain damage. This has, unless it's been in a very, very like uh, damp environment, I think this has been submerged in water. I think that's what's happened here. So, uh, yeah. Well, I'm wondering if it's worth even wasting any time on it. It's just that it would be nice to kind of see how it works and stuff. You know, see how it goes together. That goes through to there, that must be this one here, to join up each side. And if you had exactly the same hoverboard then you might be able to reuse some of the connectors, some of the cables and stuff. Right, okay, uh, yeah I'll just do a quick close up of it and then what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to start taking it apart just to see. I don't really know why. But just to, just to see, I'm quite curious to know where the battery connector should connect to. And uh, just have a look at the wheels and stuff. I mean, this one's still, still turning, but whether it's all water damage in there or not, I don't know. But perhaps I could take them off and have a look. But uh, what I might do, just to annoy myself, I might have one more look at the listing, just to see the £100 worth of parts, because really... I can't see any parts that are usable on this at the moment. But I'm going to take it apart further just to see what's what. I'm going to gather up all the screws and then I'm going to give everything a good hoover so this doesn't go over my carpet. Then I'll take the rest of it apart. Even though this won't be working, it will still be a learning experience and it will still be interesting to see how the rest of it goes together. So what do you reckon? Do you reckon it was uh, dropped into a swimming pool or something like that and then they took the battery out as a safety precaution or do you reckon there was a fault on this they took the battery out and it was like unrepairable so they just uh, you know left it and then uh, it's just been left in a very damp environment I think looking at the state of it my opinion is that it was maybe ridden into a swimming pool or something like that I know it's unlikely but how else could it be so uh, so corroded and then 
I think they took the battery out, you know, maybe for, for safety, to stop it uh, to stop it exploding or something like that. Hey, you know what, I might be able to reuse that. Possibly, if it's not too corroded there. You never know. That might be the hundreds of pounds worth of spares just there. The good thing about this is now, I've always wanted to see what's inside these wheels. And if, for example, I break it, I really don't care because it's not going to work anyway. So in a way, it's quite liberating to do this because you can just see how it works without any worry at all about uh, breaking anything. Right, okay, so that's disconnected. Right, so what happens is when you press on the pads, these things move up and down just a tiny bit. That one there and that one there. And then there's these two little sensors here and here. So what must happen is this must, I mean, this is just rubber. I don't know whether there would be any sort of magnet or anything in there but it must know exactly how much it goes in there. And then the more it goes in there, the more power it will put to that side. So for example, if this is forward, then when that goes fully in there, it's gonna make the wheel go you know, 100% forward. And then when you go just 10%, it's gonna move slowly. And the more and more you do it, it's gonna be putting more power to the motor to be able to uh, make it work. Amazing thing is that when you actually use these, they're really sensitive. And uh, that area there is actually quite small, so I didn't think, I didn't really think it would be like that. But again, you can see it's just full of rust. So, uh, yeah, this is just it's really bad. Really, really bad. The wheel's seized up through rust, that's exactly what's happened. curious as to what this bit is here. I know some of them have Bluetooth, but I thought the Bluetooth was for like speakers, so I don't know what uh, I don't know what this unit is here. Looks like a spring inside there, so would it be some sort of aerial? But what would you uh, yeah and it says on it ants for uh, you know antenna. What on earth would you need an antenna on here for? Because uh, I haven't seen any holes for any speakers built into it. You know, if there was holes in the bottom, in the bottom of the uh, casing for speakers, then I would say it's you know for Bluetooth, so you can play your music from your phone, and the speaker comes out here. I'm sure I've seen that on them before, but I, I don't know what you would need. I don't know why you would need a, a little aerial on here, a little antenna on here. Right, okay, if you know the answer, pop it down in the comments because that's quite interesting. It does say there on that one, external interface. So would it be so you can do fault finding or something without taking it apart? Could that be an option? Maybe. Right, let's see if I can get some Allen keys to undo this big thing here. Right, oh God, that's heavy. Whoa, that's where all the weight comes from, the wheels. I thought it might be the battery and stuff, but uh, amazingly heavy. Right, so this is, yeah, God, it's so light now. Right, okay, so that's interesting. The uh, Obviously, I've just looked at this now, the motor is built into the wheel itself, which is pretty clever, because obviously there's no motor here, is there? Never really thought about it before, but the motor is the wheel, or the wheel is the motor. Right, I'm gonna get another little bag to put away all these rusty screws and give everything a, a clean up again. Do you know what, it would have been interesting, I mean I wouldn't do it, but it would be interesting to buy some of the other ones with the same picture to see if the fault is exactly the same, see if they're all water damaged. 
I mean that's why it's seized up, it's full of water. It's a shame I can't tell if that's salt water or just normal rainwater. I'm not sure if there's a way you can tell that without specialist equipment. Mind you, either way, it's not really going to tell. It's not really going to tell you much because somebody might somebody might have been using this by the sea, and then they're you know off a pier or something like this, and it might have gone in. Yeah, look, you can see it just soaking up there. It's actually, quite a lot of water in it. Still now. It smells bad as well. <coughs> And that explains why this side is completely seized up. I wonder if there's going to be any water in the other side. The other wheel might actually be okay. You know, it doesn't explain the fact that this hasn't been used. If you look at this tyre here, there's no wear on it whatsoever and it's still got the spikes on it. So unless it was just ridden around on carpet for a bit, I think that this has been water damaged in transit from the factory or maybe a flood in the factory and stock has been water damaged because otherwise if somebody was using it like I just said on a pier and it went into the sea or even a swimming pool or something unless it happened within a minute of them buying it there would be damage to the, there would be wear on the tires so I think that this has been uh, damaged before it's been used basically It's amazing how these things end up on eBay, isn't it? Now, I would never do this to a good wheel, but obviously this wheel's unusable now anyway, so that's why I'm just damaging the, the rubber around the edge here in an attempt to get it to be taken apart. Okay, I think what I'll do is, because this one's seized up, I think I'll uh, take apart the other one because then it might just come off easy and then I'll have a better idea because right now obviously this wheel's not turning so maybe that's why uh, that's why I can't get into it so let me take apart this side rather than wasting all evening on that alright this side doesn't look as bad but it's still all corroded it would be unlikely that that board's going to work again But you never know, if it's never been turned on, then uh, possibly if I was to just to clean it up, you know, I mean, there's a chance it could work, I don't know. Again, put down in the comments what you think, whether you think it would be possible to get these to work again. What I don't know is whether there's a, a left and right, or whether it's the same on both of them. They look to be identical boards. What I didn't take note of, well I did in the video, but uh, maybe they're the same, and the reason they work differently is because these wires are connected up to different ones. So, for example, on this side they were connected up. I'm making this up now, but maybe it was like the green one to the yellow one. Well, maybe on this one the green one doesn't go to the yellow one. And that might be why you'd be able to use the same boards on both sides. Because they do look to be the same. The amazing thing about these is the preciseness of them. When you actually use them, when you just move an absolute tiny bit, it will move a tiny bit. You know, you can make these things move a centimetre at time, uh, at a time with good control. So uh, they really are, I know they look a bit ridiculous and stuff, but they really are amazing. What I think would be good, fun, is, uh, you know, let's say, for example, a, a go-kart. If you see my other video, you've seen that you can attach go-karts onto these. But imagine if you had, like, uh, if you just had these wheels, like one on each corner on a big bit of plywood, and then when you were to lean, for example, then, uh, you know, lean forward and it would go forward, lean back, left and right. Uh, so if you could imagine maybe like, or maybe not just one, maybe if you just had a hoverboard at each corner, and then when you were to lean different ways, it would go different ways. So instead of having like a steering wheel, you would just lean to go left and right. I think you could have a, a lot of fun with these if you had a load of them, then uh, if you had the time and if you had the space to kind of build different frameworks for them, 
I'm sure you could have a lot of fun setting up two or three together. Working its way up. Oh wow, yeah, I can see uh, a lot of coils in there. Right, I've got to be careful not to damage this now. There we go. Excellent. Good, I wanted to see what the inside of this looks like. A motor in a wheel. Okay, so this is a bear in here. And that. That's moving nicely, look. Nothing wrong with that. Doesn't look like there was any. Doesn't look like there's been any water damage in this one. Wow. Right, okay. So the whole. How does this work now? How does this work? So this bit stays. That bit stays still, doesn't it? Hold on. Oh, look at that. So the whole thing turns around there. Oh, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? I wonder, could you take this out? So these must be all the magnets around the edge here. And this thing's spinning inside that. Yeah that you can feel. Right, so it's stuck there and now we've got a gap here and if I move it up it sticks up there and we've got a gap here. I wonder whether I would be able to pull this whole thing would I be able to pull this thing out or not? No, I suppose I wouldn't, would I? Because otherwise the whole thing would just fall. No, it wouldn't fall out because that's sealed with that. So I wonder whether I wonder whether this would pull out or not. Obviously you've got to No, maybe not. Doesn't look damaged in there, though. I've got a feeling that possibly this might still work. Because it's, uh, you know, it looks good. The connector's not great. The connector definitely looks like it's got a bit of corrosion on it. But I think that this wheel might work. Anyway, well, I suppose I don't really need to take it out, do I? In my opinion, obviously, I know nothing about these, but I would think that there's a chance that that could still work. I mean, I don't actually know how to test the windings on it, but uh, I've got a feeling there's a chance because it just looks so dry and it still spins nicely. I know it doesn't sound like it spins nice, but even on a working hoverboard, they are very, uh, they are very stiff. Okay, so there's continuity between that first blue wire, that first blue wire there, and that first blue wire there. So now let's go into the middle blue wire. Yeah. Yeah. Or am I just measuring the board because the traces on the board, there's going to be continuity on them, isn't there? Yes, yeah, so that's not really going to, that's not going to prove anything. Yeah, it's not going to prove anything. I don't know how to test. I don't know how to test them. Right, okay, but I'm I'm happy that I've looked inside that because I think it's quite a it's quite a clever design. So basically, what's happening is with a normal motor. Let's think about a scale electrics motor from years ago. The casing was solid, and then the motor on the inside, you know, whatever it's called, the, the middle bit, spin which then spins the gear, which then spins the wheels. But the casing itself was kind of, you know, 
glued onto the car, the bottom of the car, and this bit did the spinning. Well here the opposite's happening. This middle bit is being stationary and then this bit here is doing the spinning. So basically this bit is staying stationary and then when power is applied it's actually spinning the outside so it's like the casing that's spinning. So it's quite uh, it's quite clever in a way. It's well obviously it's still a motor but it's kind of working in the opposite effect of the motors that I'm used to. So for example again on a radio control car the outer casing is the bit that doesn't move and just the, the spindle in the middle spins but it's the opposite effect here where the middle spindle stays stationary and then the outer bit spinning just like if you were to hold the middle bit on that scale electrics or the radio control motor then the outer bit would spin obviously the, the, the leaves would get all tangled up and twisted but still if you held that tight enough then that bit would spin so uh, yeah clever in my opinion a clever design I like that right okay let me pop this back together well actually we don't need to do we I can just leave that Leave that out for the time being. Right, let's try this motor again here. Right, I'm just leaving it up so I'm away from the windings. There we go. Excellent. And there we go, you can see that it's obviously been sat at that level there for a long time and then possibly sat at that level for a long time. In fact, you can see three levels where it's been sat at. So it's been water deep up to there, then there, and then there. And there's still water in it now. Wow, right. Okay, so that is it there. The bearing is still moving, but if you look here, it's completely covered in rust around the edges here. Yeah, oh, look at that. Right, okay. Uh, I don't know much about motors. If you were to dry them out and get them moving, would they ever work again or not? Or is there things in there that blow? I'm not too sure. I would say they're probably quite simple devices, so maybe if it was to be cleaned up, there might be a, there might be a chance. Right, okay. Obviously, you don't have to watch me do this. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna scrape away the excess, just to see if we can get any anything moving. Don't really know why I'm doing this because, you know, it's missing. <coughs> it's missing parts, so I'm not going to be able to get it working again. A small part of me does think, though, I wonder, is it possible to get it working again? I suppose there's so much wrong with it, then uh, it's highly unlikely. I'm just thinking that if... Would it have shorted anything out with the boards and stuff if it wasn't on at the time? I mean, I know that the battery would be beyond repair... But uh, I wonder now that it's all dried out. If I was just to scrape all the bits off it, I wonder would it uh, would there be any way that any of it would work again? I think, uh, well, I mean, it's obvious that this is beyond repair, but you know what? Part of me still wants to get it moving. I don't know why. I mean, I know this is absolutely pointless, but I am half tempted to see, you know, what's missing because I already have two hoverboards and I'm wondering if the battery from one of them might fit this one. It'd be just interesting to see if I can get anything out of it at all. So uh, I think with this wheel here, I'm. Uh, it's very late it's like nearly two o'clock, it's 20 to two in the morning. I think what I'm gonna do with this one is, I'm gonna, not now, but in the morning, I'm gonna spray it with all uh, WD-40, just to see if it can penetrate through. And then if I was to give this a few whacks with the hammer, you know, there's a chance it might work loose. I mean, at the moment, the rust has just welded the magnets together. But uh, I'm not gonna give up on it. I am gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get that moving. And then right now, I'm gonna work on 
separating these two because at the moment this is all uh, kind of glued together as well. So that's what I'm going to work on now. I'm just going to get some new tissue. Look at the state of that. chassis that I need to try to get moving in the middle there and this part here is the shell so in theory that shell can be used because I'm thinking all this can be swapped over with, uh, with another one late now so I'm going to have to uh, call it a day because it's nearly two in the morning so what I'm going to do is uh, believe it or not I'm going to keep working on this tomorrow because I'm really enjoying it and I know that sounds absolute madness because most people would be really annoyed that they kind of got in theory possibly con so bad but uh, I've really enjoyed how this has gone together and uh, you know because I've taken it apart completely now apart from this bit I'm uh, going to be very confident that I could change parts on uh, balance boards in the future. Now, although they a toy that might go out again, you know, who knows? They could be, you know, they could continue to evolve, and maybe the same sort of technology will be used. So, from my point of view, it definitely hasn't been a waste of time. And uh, I'm going to try and free that wheel up tomorrow, and uh, I might see what's exactly missing because I'm still not sure where that charger connection goes to. But uh, I'm thinking there must be another little board that's been taken out of it. Or maybe I've just missed it. Maybe I haven't looked close enough. But I'm going to uh, spend a bit more time now just trying to free this up. And then I'm going to continue on again tomorrow and uh, see what the outcome is. I mean, it would be amazing if I could possibly get it to do some movement by putting in a battery from my other one. I might even put the battery in just to see what happens. Just to see, you know, if something smokes or blows or whatever. But... Uh, yeah, so uh, that's going to be it. I'm just going to do a little bit of working on this now to try and loosen it up, and then I'll be. Okay, I'm going to uh, continue on with this tomorrow, and I'm going to give everything a good soak in WD-40, and then hopefully it will can penetrate in. Unfortunately, I haven't got a circlip remover because these are two little circlips here and here and I need to undo them to be able to get this uh, basically to pry these apart and then I can clean it all up because at the moment again the rust has welded to the uh, aluminium. Right okay so uh, I will uh, see you in the morning. Okay so it's the next day now and I'm going to completely slope this and this middle section here in WD-40. I've been using the needle, pushing it into every single little bit of the hole, trying to get every little bit of wet rust out there. And then I'm going to take my time and I'm just going to keep trying to work this loose. So I'm going to be just getting my spanner on the top, moving it left and right, trying to get this to free up. Kind of pointless doing this because, you know, you can buy these for around £20. But I would just really like to try to get this moving again. Again, with this here, hopefully by uh, putting WD-40 all around the circlips here in the middle and here, bit by bit I will be able to work it loose. Now, I've been cleaning up the parts that look good on it. And surprisingly, I have actually got a few that look like they will be able to be reused. So I've given all these things a wash here. And this all looks good and the casing and stuff looks good. Also, I've... Uh, had a look at the kind of, uh, I've taken out the lights and stuff, these were all a bit rusty, but I've been cleaning them up and the switches and stuff actually look like they will work. So when you press that there, there is continuity when I go across the pins. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I wonder whether I will be able to get this working. I need a battery. Also, I need to get a lead that connects the battery to these bits here. Now, normally on the more expensive uh, hoverboards, what you have is you have two sensor circuits underneath the bits where you do that, and then you have a separate motherboard. But I believe on the cheaper ones, they do it all in one. So these are like sensor boards and motherboards bit built in. So from what I gather, the things that I'm missing are a battery and also the lead that connects up both sensors and the battery and the uh, 
and the charging port as well and you can get them on ebay for five pounds so i am tempted if i can get this freed and this freed here i'm tempted to give it a go because when i've gone across these boards here with my multimeter granted i don't know what i'm looking for but there appears to be continuity between the resistors and then when it comes to the capacitors there appears to be only continuity one way which I believe is how they should work anyway so you never know I might be lucky and it might work okay so that's what I'm going to work on today okay so I've got my WD-40 and I'm just going to completely saturate it all around the edge here and hopefully that will start to work its way in and then I might have a chance of uh, freeing it all so I've got a bit of cardboard down so I don't ruin my floor. Obviously I'm outside anyway, because this stuff smells quite strong. Let's do the bearings. I might have to do this a few times now, and I'm just going to keep trying to work it loose bit by bit. I'm also going to do this part here. Right, so I'm not going to film this part of the video because it will probably take me hours to do this. But basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a spanner here and I'm just going to keep trying to pry it. I'm going to keep scraping it with the needle and screwdriver and stuff. And I'm going to be, you know, giving it a whack and hopefully bit by bit I might be able to break the seal between the uh, magnets here where the rust has got in to it all and basically it's just welded it all together. Likewise with this, I haven't got a circlip remover so I can't undo the circlips at the edge. But what I'm hoping to do is by using force, I'm just going to start to basically just kind of wobble it bit by bit and hopefully I might start to break that seal. I hope I don't end up breaking the chassis. I want to break the seal in between them to allow it to move because they need to move about this much in relation to each other and that's what this little locking pin does here. There's a little locking pin here in a groove and you can see the groove here well, you might not be able to see it basically that is bang in the middle at the moment but it should move to there and to there right okay so next time you see it it will either be free or i will have given up right okay good news it's starting to move now if you look at this bit it's only just started but if you have a look can you see now it's still very stiff but now if you look at this bit here you can see that i'm starting to get about half a centimetre or more movement so I'm just going to keep doing that and then hopefully it will start to work its way loose I've got an awful lot of uh, rust out of it also I had to take the circlip out on one side which uh, I didn't have the proper tool for I just literally had to get a uh, screwdriver in and yank it off and then I just had to tap the spindle out that way to break the seal you can see so it's bigger on this side now and it's flush on this side so then once I've get it, got it freed up I'm going to have to tap it this side to get it back here and then I'm going to have to try to get the circlip back on which is going to be a little bit awkward without a tool but hopefully I will be able to manage it so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to keep working on this Okay, so I've nearly freed this one up now, if you have a look. It's starting to work its way loose. I'm not sure how loose it's supposed to be, but uh, I say I'm nearly there with that. So I managed to get the circlip back on. Basically, I just had to uh, put one side on, and then I just used this to lever it round and knock it in with a hammer. And luckily, it went back into place okay. You can see now but you can see all the rust that's still coming out of it. So if I spray it on top here, you will see that it's just dripping out pure watery rust. But I'm gonna keep doing this for a while and then eventually that will become completely free. Right, okay, to try and free this up, what I've been doing is I've been holding onto the axle here via a spanner, because if you have a look, there's a cutout here like a flat so I've been holding onto it here and then what I've been doing is just gently with the hammer I'm just been tapping it around the edges trying not to uh, hit the coils obviously and uh, every now and then I can feel splats coming up on me so I know it is starting to work its way loose also I can see that bit by bit it's starting to lift up here
can see now how much it's raised up. Yes, it's starting to turn, right, okay. Have a look at that. Can you see it's only going a millimetre, but that's something. So now it's starting, I'll be able to get more WD-40 in. There we go. <coughs> okay, it's jammed again, but there we go. Now, look. Excellent. Right, so that's going to keep me busy now for quite a while. Now, I hope with all that hammering that I haven't bashed any of the, the coils, I hope it's still going to work. If it was ever going to work, I don't know whether it would work in the first place once it's been submerged in water for such a long amount of time. really starting to free up now. Alright, so I'm just going to keep cleaning it. Getting rid of all this horrible gunk. Right, I think I'm nearly done now. So basically you can see how much cleaner it is than it was before. And uh, you can see now that it does turn. So what I've been doing is just holding it like this and I've just been working it like this and then spinning it a little bit and I keep working it and then the idea is to get every little bit of water and WD-40 out of it. So if you have a look now you can see it's gathering down in the bottom there and then when I wipe the tissue on it, it's taking the bits out. So I'm just going to do this for about another 10 or 15 minutes and then I'm going to close it up. I'm really curious to see whether this will ever work again or not. This could be all a big waste of time. I'm just thinking that, is there anything in there to kind of short, you know, is there anything in there to short out, even if water did get in there? So I'm nearly there now. You can see the amount of mess with all the tissues and everything. So uh, I'm just going to keep doing that for a bit and as far as the chassis is concerned I'm quite happy with that because look, look how free and easy it is now. So that's definitely going to be working okay and it's going the full range of travel if you look at the kind of locating pin here. You can hear it hitting. So I'm really happy. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this now and then I'm going to uh, close it up and uh, have a think about what I'm going to do next. So now that the wheels and the chassis are done, what I can do is I can turn my attention to this. And if you have a look, you can see that there's a load of kind of white, minerally salt stains everywhere. Now, I could be wrong, but I think I remember reading that if you were to drop, for example, uh, a phone into water, let's say an iPhone, you know, four or five or six, not the waterproof ones, then I've heard it's uh, as long as you take the battery out, it's not the actual water that kills it, I think it's the minerals left behind. So what I'm thinking is, obviously I don't know whether this is going to work or not, I say it's highly unlikely, but what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to scrape off all this white stuff here. So if you have a look here, can you see this stuff here? Yeah, you can see now, when I scrape it with the needle, that it disappears. So I'm going to go over the complete circuit board, and I'm just going to try to scrape all the bits away, like if you have a look at that bit there. You can see now it does all come off. So I'm just going to go everywhere and do that. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. See what happens. See whether it's possible to get this working again. So I'll come back to it once I've cleaned up both circuit boards everywhere. Right, OK, unfortunately bad news. While I was cleaning it, I noticed that this was a little bit loose. And if you have a look, you can see now that that's lifted up there and the contacts have just broken away and because this is really one of the most important things on a board because this is when you uh, press down on the front and back 
they go into these bits here, you know, so you've got the little rubber things that go in and out of there. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of put an end to repairing this one. I don't know what this is called. If I knew what it was called, possibly I could solder some new ones in. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is, because these are only cheap anyway, I'm going to have a look on eBay just to see how much replacement motherboards are. Because then if the motors were to work, then you see if I could get a couple of motherboards for maybe 20 or £25 or £30, then it might be worth it, you know, just to get the thing working. I've spent quite a bit of time with this now. I've got quite attached to it. I'd quite like to see it working. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a shame there, but there's no way that I can repair that because the actual metal thing here that goes down into here has broken. You can just see the metal prongs at the back are still holding in place, but not these two here. So, and I presume this, this thing here probably has to be quite precise. You can see also the rust that's gone all the way underneath it as well. So, more than likely there's going to be fuller rust underneath this one here as well. Right, okay, so I'm going to... Uh I'm going to still just clean things up and uh, you know have a look on eBay and see what's what. Right, okay, so the uh, chassis now is nice and loose, look at that. Yeah, so that's not going to be a problem, that's going to work fine. The wheels, this was the good wheel here, and as you can see, when I hold it here, you can see it's moving. Nice and smooth. And good news is, the bad wheel is also moving nice and smooth. Feels a little bit rougher, but uh, it just might need a little bit more, you know, wearing in kind of thing. Well, not wearing in, but you know, just wearing away all the crud that's inside it. So I'm not too sure what to do right now because the thing is, from this setup here, I'm missing a battery and I'm also missing the battery connector that connects up the two boards and also the little charging, the little charging port as well. So uh, I've had a look online, they're £5, I haven't actually priced up a battery, but the problem is, I don't know if these are working, well I know one of them is definitely not going to work because of this, uh, the, the brake on this one here, and even if I was to unsolder it and try to bodge it up with a bit of wire, they still look very rusty under there, so chances are these are probably not going to work. And also, uh, I don't know if the wheels are working. So I've got to be careful because if I was to go out and buy new motherboards and wheels then and a battery and that lead, then I might as well get another working brand new hoverboard. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I've already got a couple of hoverboards. I had one original one and one that I fixed the other day. And my son is on about having this white cover on his because his is getting quite bashed up now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my son's hoverboard, which was the original one that I bought brand new however long ago, a couple of years ago. And uh, I'm going to start swapping parts over. For example, I'm going to try these wheels on that. Now, I know you can get two types of wheels, 250 watt and 350 watt. I don't know by looking at this part number here uh, which ones they are. I've Googled it and somebody else was asking the same question and they didn't, uh, they didn't know whether it was 250 or 350 watts. It does say 36 volts. So I think I'm going to take, take a risk. So I think that's what I'm going to do because, for example, if this faulty wheel is working, and obviously the good wheel is working as well, then that might make my mind up to get the motherboards and the battery. But if the motherboards are not working, the wheels are not working, then there's no point in doing any of this. I might as well just swap the case over for my son's, the white case, and then I'll have a spare chassis and, you know, for example, a few spare switches left over because there's no point in throwing good money after bad. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take apart my son's one and start swapping a few bits over and see what's what. interesting looking at this one here I didn't realize this looks like a cheaper one as well because it's just got the two boards uh, and the long uh, motor thing as well so maybe this is quite useful so maybe I could swap the uh, boards over uh, before I mess around with the wheels and see if the boards are working so now hopefully I'll be able to tell exactly what does and doesn't work so that's a stroke of luck Well, I think first I'm going to do the, the wheels because I'm not 100% sure. The boards are not exactly the same, so I'm not sure about all the connectors. Right, okay, so that's one bad wheel in. So not the, uh, not the wheel that I think might be a good one, but the... Uh, the bad one, that was all rusted up. So let's see now, I'm not gonna put the cover all back on. Oh, actually, sorry, I have to put the cover all back on because of the, uh, 
on and off connectors. Right, okay. Right, okay, let's see what happens. Well, went a bit crazy there, didn't it? And there's definitely something there. Right, okay. Obviously, I don't want to stand on it because it could go crazy. I could break my neck. So, I'm going to connect it up to that cart that you might have seen in my last video. And then I can sit down and do it. And if it goes crazy, then I haven't got far to fall. So, uh, let me set that up in the garden. I've just temporarily put this cover on as well because when I put the cart on, the straps are going to go around here. And I don't want it to hit any against any of the internals. Right, okay, so let's see now. So this is the wheel that was originally on this good hoverboard and I've put the faulty rusted up wheel, you know, with that weird star thing there. So let's see what happens now. Right, okay. That's working. Oh. Okay, let's sit on it. <laughs> No, it's making a weird noise. Right, okay. Uh, that was making a very weird noise there. Obviously, I don't want to burn out the good battery. Can't do this while filming. Right, okay, this is going a little bit crazy, so I'm going to have to get the camera down because... Uh, Obviously, I need to work out what's going on, and then when I've worked out what's going on, then I'll uh, I'll come back to it. Right. Okay. So uh, yeah, basically, it's going absolutely crazy. It does work sometimes, but it's not doing what you expect it to do. So, for example, it does nothing. Then all of a sudden, you go this go forward here, and it flings this thing back. So obviously, it's really dangerous. So what I'm going to do is, when I took the good wheel off here, it was yellow to yellow, blue to blue, and green to green. But I, from memory. I need to watch back the video. When I took this off the water damage board, the colours were not standard. It was like, you know, blue to yellow or something like that. So I'm going to see the colours on there because maybe this wheel set up slightly differently because remember, this is a different wheel than the one I took off. The design and stuff's different. So I'm going to put it to the way that it was on the water damage board and let's see if it will recognise it then. Good news is it definitely does spin occasionally. It's just not working like it should do. Right, okay, so uh, I watched back the video. Now, I was only watching it on the camcorder itself, so it was very small, but I believe on the board, the yellow one goes to the blue off the wheel. The board green, motherboard green, goes to yellow off the wheel, and motherboard blue goes to uh, uh, wheel green. So uh, it's definitely, definitely different, but I don't know if it's these old, the faulty motherboards that have got it mixed up, or whether it's the wheel that's mixed up. So I'll try it and see, uh, see what happens. Right, so the wheel blue goes to the yellow. And the wheel yellow goes to green. And the wheel green goes to blue. Right, okay, let's see if that makes a difference. I hope I don't blow anything now on the uh, motherboard. Just turn it on here. Right. Well, that might be better. No, it's going the wrong way. Kind of seems to do what just what it wants to do. It doesn't really uh, correspond to anything. Do you know what maybe I should do? Uh, rather than, because obviously 
A, I don't know if I've got the connections right, but also I don't know, this is the dodgy wheel, isn't it? While I'm quite happy that this wheel here is, well, I mean, I don't know, but this wheel definitely seemed to be less water damaged, didn't it, because it was moving. So maybe I should put this wheel on here, and then if I get it working with, you know, the correct colour combinations, then I know that this wheel is going to be exactly the same. So I think that's a sensible thing to do. So uh, I'm not going to bother filming this, but I'm just going to swap the wheels over from that one to this one. Right, okay, so I've put the... Uh, the better wheel off the water damage board onto the good hoverboard and I've used the green to green, blue to blue, yellow to yellow and let's see what happens. No, it's still the same thing so it's not, uh, you see it's kicking like that. So uh, it definitely isn't that colour code. Right, let me put the colour code on. The same colour code as the water damage board, this one, this one here. Right, okay, so that's that same colour code as the uh, water damage one. Let's see what happens now. Nope. No, it's still doing whatever it wants to do. Right, okay. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try different combinations just to see if one of them works or not. I mean, I thought they would have been all kind of standard because this connector here I can't put on any other way. But um, maybe it's not. You know, I don't know much about hoverboards, so uh, maybe it's not standard. Aha! That's the one! That looks like that's the one. Right, okay, so I need to write down what it is on this one. So the yellow from the board goes to the green wheel. The green from the board goes to the blue wheel. And the uh, blue from the board goes to the yellow wheel. Right, okay, so uh, that looks like it's the colour code. I mean, obviously I haven't tested it outside yet, but that's what it looks like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to temporarily put the cover back on and uh, try it outside, see if it is working, and then I'm going to put the faulty wheel on. And, uh, well, I might as well leave this one on this side. I'm going to put the faulty wheel on the other side, and this time it might well work. So let's put the cover on and go outside. Right, okay, so I've got the cart on it again, let's turn it on. Right. Let's see. Okay. Oh my god, it's working. Yes. Hey, <laughs> it's doing it. That feels completely normal. So that's good, so we've definitely got one working wheel. And now, uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the faulty wheel on the other side. And uh, let's see, do you know what? I've got quite high hopes because the faulty wheel definitely had power going to it. It was just behaving weirdly, exactly the same as this wheel. So now I know the color code. I'm thinking it should be the same on both sides. And, uh, well, maybe not actually, maybe it's reversed, I don't know. But either way, I'll just keep swapping it until I get the right colour code. Yeah, this is definitely working absolutely fine. Right, okay, so I'm going to take it in and uh, put the other faulty wheel on. Right, so we're going to swap this one now. Right, okay, so I've done the same colour code as the other wheel, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. If not, I'll have to swap them about. 
Right, okay, so we've got both wheels from the water damage board on. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens. Well, that looks to be, that looks to be okay. Right, okay. It uh, appears to be okay, so I'm going to take it outside, see what happens. Okay, so turn it on, let's see what it does. Oh, that's amazing. It's actually working. I'm going to make sure it goes backwards. Yeah, turn. So this is with the 240 wheels on now. Well, sorry, when I say 40 wheels, you know, the one from the water damage board. And uh, it's working. I can't feel it drifting off to one side or anything. It seems to be, uh, seems to be okay. Obviously, you're going to compensate for that anyway by just putting the, your hand down a bit more on the levers. But, uh, yeah. And that's the other side there. Well, that's pretty amazing. Okay, so at least both wheels are working. So now I've got to look into uh, whether those motherboards are working or not. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do a bit of swapping around and stuff now. And uh, I think rather than keep on filming, because the video's just going to go on and on and on and on and on, I think I'm just going to keep playing around. So I'm going to you know, put the motherboards in, take the motherboards out, swap them around and stuff and see what happens. But now I know both wheels are working, I'm thinking that maybe I will just buy a battery and the motherboard set. And then uh, I haven't actually looked up the price of the batteries yet, but you can get the motherboard from uh, just under 20 pounds. So it's not too bad. So I think, uh, although it's still gonna work out to be an expensive hoverboard or balance board, I think it might well be worth it. Right, okay. Right, okay, so I've put the motherboards back in now, turned it on, and it all lit up and stuff, but it was just going crazy, it was making a lot of noise, and then it wouldn't let me turn it off. The only way I could turn it off was by disconnecting the battery. So let me just show you that here now. So, put the battery in. I'm not gonna do it in fully because uh, I need to yank it out again. And now if I turn it over. Hold on, there's one disconnected here, one second. Right, so I'm plug that one in first. Right, okay, that's everything plugged in. Right, so, so if I turn it on, so the on and off switch is here. lights over this side of them and everything to short out because everything's just flapping around. Right, okay, so turn it on. Okay, so you can see I've got a green light here which I think is the battery but this one's flashing red and uh, sometimes I can feel it wanting to move. There you go. Kind of wants to move this side but not this side which makes sense because that sensor's faulty but then worryingly it won't let me turn it off. See? Okay, now I think it's doing some sort of calibrating or something. So if it was just the fact that the red light was on, I would say it's because of that faulty thing I showed you earlier that snapped off the motherboard. But the fact I can't turn it off as well, I'm thinking there might be more than one fault to this. Right, okay. So I have to pull the battery out because these things here are getting warm. There we go. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to price up how much the uh, motherboards and also the battery are because as far as I can see, if I get a couple of new motherboards, I think the rest is going to work okay and obviously yeah, a new battery as well. So that's what I'm going to do now. 
Okay, so I'm a little bit shocked. I looked up the price of the batteries and I can't believe how much they cost. I mean, obviously it is a big battery pack, but I just thought because the overall price of the hoverboards are quite cheap now, I thought the batteries would have come down, but they're not. Look, it's £50 for that one, £80 for that one, £82 for that one, £35 for that one. So uh, even if I was to go for the cheapest one, which is like £35, I then need to pay around, uh, let me show you the... Uh, motherboard I think it was about 18 pound or so for the motherboard let me show you the one that I need for this there we go this one here so uh, 18 pound 25 so realistically you're going to be looking between like roughly around 55 to 60 pounds and uh, yeah, in my opinion, it's not worth it because obviously the wheels are still all bashed up. And remember, that doesn't include a charger. So if you were to add up that onto the price of the eBay listing to begin with, then you could have near enough got yourself a new one. Or I have even seen balance boards for sale now for about 110, 120 pounds. So you're paying exactly the same price, and then you've got a you know, uh, it's still a second-hand item, isn't it? It's still all bashed up and stuff. So. I'm not going to do anything with this. It's it's not actually economically viable to do it. It's not worth throwing good money after bad. If the battery was like fifteen pounds, and if the motherboard was fifteen pound, I probably would have done it. So uh, what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to swap the inside of the good hoverboard or balance board over to the white one because my son wanted the white one. And uh, yeah, that will be the end of the video. So the next time you see it now, hopefully you will see it working on the white one, and then I'll just round this video up. Right, at long last I'm finished. So you can see now, this is my son's hoverboard. He wanted the black bottom and I've put the white top in it. And the white top does look nice and clean now. And uh, obviously it works absolutely fine because all I've done is change the shell on it. So if you have a look now, you can see forward, back and turn. It's hard to do it with my hands, but I've tested it out and it's working fine. It's just wobbling like that because there's not an even weight on it. So, uh, did I like this video? Well, funnily enough, I really enjoy doing this. Now, I know most people would be absolutely livid getting something off eBay for £40 and it looks like it's been living in the sea for the last six months. But for me, I actually learnt loads and I'm really happy that I managed to get the wheels working. So money-wise, of course, I haven't made any money on it, but it's useful now because I've got two wheels, I've also got a chassis and I've got things like the rubber thing here and stuff if it was ever to fail. Now one of my son's wheels, it looks like there is a little bit of play left and right because he likes going really fast on that cart and like skidding around the corners. So maybe I will have to use these wheels in the future. but. Uh, most people would be angry because obviously that listing was a complete and utter con unless the person selling it really didn't have any clue whatsoever you could see that one wheel was rock solid and you could see the rust everywhere so uh, but from my point of view I actually really enjoyed doing this my hands have had a right workout they haven't worked this hard in ages but uh, I learned a lot so in my opinion although I couldn't get this fixed I am happy with it to get it working it would be possible but you need to buy a battery and the motherboards as well spending around about 55 to 60 pound in my opinion it's not worth it so i'm happy just to have the spares here and mainly for the learning experience so unfortunately i can't show you a working hoverboard at the end of it but at least my son's happy now because he's got one that's two toned so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up please subscribe for more how to and also fix it videos as well and uh, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye now.